Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a hip hop and happy couple in love that loves reacting to some Halo. Hip hop and happy, okay. Yeah, uh, so I, I didn't know how you were going to react to that one. I'm just like, either I'm going to get her to crack up on this one or she's going to look at me like I'm crazy. It, it was the latter, but you know. <laughs> it was a little bit of both. It was a little bit of both. So uh, we're checking out uh, Why You Wouldn't Survive the Halo Flood. We did uh, Why You Wouldn't Survive the Left 4 Dead um, zombie apocalypse. And so people really enjoyed that one. So we got a link below, down below in the description of this video uh, for the original video from Wild Such Gaming. So they got a bunch of different uh, videos like this. So you should go ahead and check them out. And you should check out uh, you know, our, our playlist for the, for Halo. For, you know, we got, we've been playing Halo on the channel. So we got some gameplay in there for you. We got a lot of reactions for different Halo stuff. We checked out like the terminals and whatnot. So, but if you like, if you like Halo, then, you know, happy binge watching. I mean, I think I would survive the flood, so I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't think I would survive uh, five minutes with the flood. Um, there was actually a moment in uh, our Halo gameplay where, like, one of the soldiers was, like, freaking out and whatever. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, for the, for, for the, because we were battling the flood and they were freaking out. And, like, so I, I thought I was giving him mercy. I put him out of his misery and I uh, shot him. And uh, because, like, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, you just wouldn't survive the Halo flood. They're, they're crazy. He might have already been infected. <laughs> You ready? Ready. Why you wouldn't survive the Halo Flood? Because your husband would kill you. Now that seems accurate. <laughs> So with the success of why you wouldn't survive the Left 4 Dead zombie apocalypse, I wanted to branch out and see what other universes that you and I would 99.999999% not successfully live through. There are a lot of worst case scenario settings to skim through, but one that I thought is just absolutely insane and even puts our infected little friends in Left 4 Dead to shame was Ooh. the Flood born from the Halo franchise. An ever-growing orgy of like-minded biomass boils an awfully gurgling and bone snapping noises, we look at an infection that breaks the notion of sky's the limit as it renders entire universes to bend to their knees. And hmm. in all life is up for grabs as we increase today's forecast from a light rain to a flash flood. Oh shit, we're fucked. Today, <laughs> we're not asking a question. Today, I'm telling you why you wouldn't survive the Halo Flood. Oh, shit. How fast you would become a walking abomination of various limbs, poppable pimples, and claws, we first need to dig up the ancient history of how the Flood came into existence. Billions of years ago, in a galaxy far, far away, the highly What's advanced the alien race known as the Precursors came to the Milky Way galaxy, looking to expand life and their research based on their beliefs centered around the mantle of responsibility, a core ideology basically focused on preserving all life. In their pursuits, they created the Forerunners and a very early version of mankind. The Forerunners saw themselves as superiors under the Mantle belief system yeah. and would go as far as to kill others who thought differently. The Precursors eventually deemed humans as the successor to the Mantle and this proclamation angered the arrogance of the Forerunners. The Forerunners brought their creators, the Precursors, to near extinction and forced all survivors to go into either stasis pods or to convert themselves into a sort of dust that would regenerate them into their former selves after a long period. But mm. as time drew on, millions of years in fact these dust piles were corrupted by sickness madness and of course with anything that says outbreak mutations possibly caused by the sheer anger and anguish they faced by the betrayal of the race they created the madness stirred up long enough inside the mutations to create the flood upon regeneration but this regeneration wasn't just a dust becoming a full being instantly like beans? some yeah, astronaut mix. humans stumbled upon vials of this dust and used it in general means for local wildlife until it unknown knowingly changed their genetics over centuries and spread like wildfire, causing humans to eat infected animals, boils, and eventually each other to grow. The Precursors were aware of their hostility and came to the conclusion that a unified hive mind hostile takeover was the only way to achieve peace and soon sought to consume all organic life. Hmm. The flood worked in a certain way, taking control of any organic life it can at an increasingly exponential rate and using these hosts and their mental capacities to various advantages. More on that later. But it was basically a virus slash parasite in human slash animal form. And with the more biomass and intellect it gathered, the more intelligent and gigantic it became. Notice how I referred to the Flood as a single entity? Well, that's because they are of one mind, a hive mind. However, when the Flood count is low, the infected around the area are more feral and more zombie-like than anything else. But as the numbers grow and more intelligence is accrued, nearby proto-grave mines and soon grave mines will start to form. Grave mines, as shown here, 
there are Leviathan-like beings who are able to strategize and direct all flood forms to strike effectively and overwhelm all available biomass in a given area to increase its reach and strength. With the availability of dozens of nearby human worlds, the very first flood outbreak had begun. They grew exponentially from system to system, consuming all human contact across the system. As humans fled from their homes, they went into the territory of the Forerunners. This was automatically deemed a proclamation of war, so the Forerunners attacked the humans while they were already weakened from flood forces. The Forerunners drove us back to our homeworld, de-evolving us to primal states, and erased all human achievements across the galaxy. During this yeah. war, the Flood entrenched themselves amongst the mostly unaware Forerunners until they were overwhelmed, causing the creation of the Halo Rings we know today as a worst-case scenario plan to wipe out all life and prevent the Flood from expanding. For as you see, the Flood could not be killed in any way they tried or knew how. So the best way they could prevent the rise of the Flood was to extinguish their food source. The most reliable way of combating them is by literally hitting the reset button on your universe and <laughs> executing a unified suicide pact on all organic creatures. By wiping out all life, the Halo Rings will prevent them from growing in number and forcing them to die out over time, as well as ruining the most important pillar of the belief system of the mantle, preserving all life. Of course, that wasn't the end of the flood as we came to know playing Halo 1 through 3. The firing of the Halos millennia ago did not necessarily wipe out all life, as Forerunners evacuated many species outside of its range. They also made a horrible decision of preserving flood specimens in containment yeah. pods for studying within Installation 4. The forerunner name for the Halo Ring we get to explore and fight on in the first game. The Covenant became quickly aware of the Flood's nature when they opened these pods, and a large portion of their forces were assimilated, prompting outside Covenant to lock the facility down. Of course, humans having to touch everything. Touch. Don't touch. Touch. Don't touch. <laughs> and now it only hurts when you touch it. <laughs> Absolutely unacceptable. Went inside to gain intel on the Covenant right. led by Captain Keys and went and opened a pod thinking it contained weapons they could utilize, but they unleashed the fury of the Flood once more. This is where I'll lead off on the proceedings of how the Flood came to be and go into how they would spread, what they do to you, and how to combat them, and most importantly, how you would not survive if they began to rise in number in your area or basically your planet. The Flood mm -hmm. are a parasitic species always looking to turn your body into into an even bigger bod by smushing it in with your family, your dog, your neighbors, your high school principal, <laughs> anything Landers. that literally can breathe or is just alive. Like Most people can the flood to a zombie apocalypse, but honestly, you would pray for a true zombie apocalypse if these things came into reality. Multiple factors can back this conclusion that we will now cover. As I said earlier, flood spores, the little popcorn things you shoot, will immediately hmm. attack living organisms without hesitation as a typical virus would to any available hosts. It only takes one to latch onto you and use their tentacle-like appendages to burrow into your chest and penetrate your spine in order to immediately render you powerless and hijack your central nervous system, Ugh. injecting its cells to alter Ugh. your DNA instantaneously and taking complete control of your body at that point while you feel everything. The altered cells within your body will begin to transform parts of you to better suit the type of flood you will become. If you were to become a combat type, your bones would be snapped, your skin torn apart, and organs reassigned to becoming weapons and allow for more agile movement. But huh. during this physical reassignment, you will still be alive and feeling everything. So it's not like when a zombie horde pins you down and tears you apart until your body fails. Ah. No, the flood will keep you alive until it decides to either kill you by snapping your neck or to shut down your brain activity. You can either become a combat form of flood that can tear open prey with its jagged claws, weapons you had at your disposal upon infection, or a carrier form that pretty much is the boomer from Left 4 Dead, where a majority huh. of your body is hollowed out to facilitate a yep. way of spreading the infection. Yes. During the first stage of the local outbreak, these wandering flood will be feral and relentlessly searching for victims without strategy or direction. This stage will pretty much be the easiest time you will have as you will be able to make it out alive, but probably only while someone else is being overrun. This stage is the closest you will get to a typical zombie apocalypse and probably would be the same level as a Left 4 Dead level for it, considering the most dangerous form of infected types they have in their regular numbers. But the flood is a collective consciousness that grows 
grows a greater connection with the more biomass and cerebral networks it integrates. Once enough people, animals, and even plants have been consumed, the flood will begin critical thinking in their numbers and start more unified attacks. So the days of one-track-minded zombie-like creatures dies out pretty quick as you are now facing hordes of flood that will think of ways to get around any defenses you may have established. But even to that point, they still will be restricted to certain areas that require skill sets to leave, trying to find more resources to integrate. That is when they will utilize whatever is inside the brain of a victim to their full advantage. This is probably the most terrifying aspect of the flood. Instead of just killing some prey fully outright, they will instead keep a host alive if the flood discovered within your synapses in your brain a shred of knowledge that would be beneficial to the flood. Example being, infecting a pilot of a giant vehicle such as the Pelican would give the flood the ability to use vehicles such as watercraft, aircraft, and spacecraft to expand their reach. While it prods your psyche for any valuable information, it will literally torture you by visually erasing your memories, engaging mental pain on top of physical pain, <sighs> and so much more until the required knowledge has been attained and the flood decides to kill you off. As was the case for Captain Keys, who held information on the location of Earth, as well as expertise on manning Covenant technology. The off. flood needed to fly the Covenant warship, the Truth and Reconciliation, which was now swarming with flood to a highly populated area. Once hijacking Keys, they saw his potential and used him in a very different sort of manner. Instead of becoming a typical flood attacker or carrier, he and his flesh were grotesquely melded with what is known as the protograve mind, the first step in pretty much the central neural network of the flood. The protograve mind is the first step to creating the near final evolution of the flood, the grave mind, that I will get into as we slowly realize how much more after we are anyways. But let's just say we begin to see the hive mind of the flood as more than just a horde of zombies, but the workings of an almost god-tier like individual pulling the strings behind the masses, a being directly speaking with you, wishing for nothing more than to extinguish what makes you, you. I am a timeless chorus. Join your voice with mine and sing victory uh. everlasting. The cultivating Dark. proto grave mind mm -hmm. interrogated Captain Keys mentally as he battled to retain his sanity and memories of his loved ones. It takes a strong willed character to battle off a mentally powerful hive mind for so long. Mm -hmm. Do you feel yourself to have the mental capacity to endure torture of mental and physical extremes? Or would you surrender and wish for the embrace of death? Eventually, the Master Chief we know and love was able to mercy kill Keys before any vital information was taken, thus, killing this instance of the proto grave mind. But with the vast amount of the flood scattered, across the lands and even cosmos, some of these small cellular structures will have denigrated after have existing for millions of years. The infection of the flood is not always successful when it comes to your mind. Through the eyes of one soldier named Wallace Jenkins, we discovered that not all infections are successful. With the extremely lengthy age of the infection, some remnants of the original strand were pervasive in finding hosts. During the initial outbreak of the flood and what we would soon have as our first experience with the flood on Installation 4, everyone except our favorite cigar-smoking, smack-talking sergeant fell <laughs> prey to the Flood. Out of these soldiers that joined the ranks of the Flood, Jenkins was overtaken by a pretty much elderly Flood Spore. Thus, its capabilities were diminished. But it still did its typical routine of entering the spine and assuming complete control of Jenkins' body, but did not kill him in the process. So the poor kid was left to be a passenger in his own body while it painfully mutated and went to hunt for other victims. At times, he could regain control of his deformed body, but it was mainly to try tried to commit suicide by running into friendly fire or jumping off high cliffs, but the flood yeah. portion of him would always reassume control and prevent this. His constant bouts of switching control was noticed by ODST troops and was soon captured and interrogated. During the interrogation, the flood portion of him went into full attack mode and began creating a blade-like arm out of Jenkins' body, ripping bone, tearing flesh, and popping blood vessels in which Ooh. Jenkins could feel everything. The pain was so immense that Jenkins snapped back into control long enough to warn his allies that the ship they were about to return to Earth with, the Truth and Reconciliation, was infested with flood. So there is a small chance that even if you get infected, you may still remain alive, but with a fate worse than death, yep. as you watch your mutated body kill your fellow man, forcing them to join your ranks, and feeling every ounce of pain from transforming, taking gunfire, and all other sources of attack. So we are through a decent portion of the beginning and middle stages of the outbreak, with flood being able to acquire the abilities to control any 
vehicles and technology by stealing the know-how from its victims. It could also steal the information of a location you may be hiding out in if a friend went out to forage for supplies or food. Unlike a zombie apocalypse where one person would just cease to live, you are now outed as to where you may find safe harborage, as well as any security access or secret entrances you may have established. Your friend is now working for the flood. <laughs> Outrunning the flood is also out of the question due to their extremely dangerous means of attacking, jumping long distances, using big meaty claws to open you up, and using guns and even freaking rocket launchers to take you down from yeah. far away. Keep in mind, it doesn't need you to be alive to force you into its ranks. It just needs your body and brain, alive or dead. And don't forget, the flood goes down to the molecular level, so if you do somehow get away but find yourself cut by them or spit on, you will eventually succumb to and become... <laughs> And the fact that the exploding ones, when popped, just release more. Your greatest defense would be creating as much fire as possible, as the feral versions of the flood will be deterred by high heat rates, as much as a virus would, since high levels of heat can kill off most forms of disease. I'm not taking into account the variants of flood that occur when hijacking Covenant or Brutes, as we don't actually have them on Earth right now to account for a flood 2018. Like I said, right now. Now, do we? Unless Bigfoot. Unless. Nice. Unless. Yes. Bigfoot is a brute. If you still <laughs> believe you can survive all of this, well, it doesn't stop there. You had been experiencing the beginning and end of the feral stage. The second stage, known as the coordinated stage, will have the flood eventually becoming so widespread and powerful that the flood supercell establishes a hive that releases spores into the air that will cause the infection to become airborne. The flood will have a more centralized mm -hmm. neural network to coordinate their attacks, but now at this point with the amount of biomass they have accrued and used to construct hives, the proto grave mind I spoke of earlier will now have transformed into the leviathan known as the grave mind the highest form of flood creation standing 280 feet tall this hentai bait of a beast thinks very critically will strategize ways to move flood forces to conquer entire populaces effectively and to keep itself and all flood specimens preserved it will reside in a layer of biomass kind of like a hive of bees were to make a giant honeycomb but instead of bringing pollen and honey and shit it brings <laughs> dead bodies so if you're planning on killing the grave mind at its source you'll find a hard outer shell of flesh to get through and a sizable army to fight. With this grave mind pulling the strings and orchestrating large-scale takeovers, the flood can also now develop foot soldiers without the need of a host to corrupt, with specimens known as pure forms. With the amount of biomass around, the flood could create foot soldiers of varying purposes just to carry out an even more deadly agenda. The pure forms do not need a host in order to be created. You can literally just pick up some of the biomass in these hives and make a new flood member, creating forms like the stalker that can clean to any surface and jump even further distances, ranged forms that can fire projectiles of sharp bone matter and keep their prey pinned down into one location until other forces overwhelm them, the tank form that can withstand <laughs> large amounts, you know what, it's basically the tank from Left 4 Dead, just more floody looking, <laughs> form created to hijack armored vehicles and instantly converting its drivers to work for the flood, and the spawner form that continuously works to create ground troops to keep up flood numbers for an unending siege. So at this stage, entire nations will will be doing everything they can just to defend themselves. Rescue efforts would be minuscule as large-scale attacks on hive mind cities with napalm strikes, military power, and even more drastic measures like launching nuclear devices. The United Nations using their unified forces to fight a windless battle. Depending on where the flood originate on Earth will probably be the first emergence of the grave mind, and with that, the downfall of the country it inhabits. Intelligence agencies, if they are lucky, will discover the grave mind's importance to the coordination of the flood and will launch a full-scale attack against it. Elite units would deploy and fail to infiltrate the hive and destroying the grave mine from the inside. So coordinated efforts between countries like America, Russia, and China would see to launching nuclear warheads to destroy it. Ethical dilemmas would cause delays in these pursuits as innocence may still remain in the area. During this hesitation, the flood may have already integrated high-ranking officials, maybe one of the elite forces sent in, and discovered the location of the warheads and how to use them. They would launch a full-scale assault on a nuclear holding facility and be able to possibly use these nukes to their own advantage by assimilating scientists and military men who have the codes and know-how to execute the protocols. Imagine the flood being in possession of nukes. But let's just say the nukes were launched and successfully hit the grave mind. Upon death of the grave mind, any localized flood units in the area not eradicated by nuclear hellfire will revert to their feral stages and look to infect as much as possible without strategy all over again. The death of a grave mind in a global scale wouldn't mean the end of it as if it were in 
Independence Day where the crazy <laughs> nut job flies into a ship and blows it up, <laughs> informing others of how to eradicate the flood. There can be multiple grave mines scattered across the world. The infection rate would still mm. continue. The relentlessness of the flood is beyond anything we can handle. We could exhaust all of our most powerful weapons, but a large percentage of the human populace would either be dead from crossfire or by being flood themselves. The very fact that any body assimilated can have their intellect used to further the growth of the grave mind is the scariest part of all. Their reach is not restricted to biological form, though. It can also release a logic plague, corrupting all artificial intelligence oh, and yeah. software, making our primary forms of communication and technologies in everyday lives wiped out within a short period. We will revert to a time period in world history where computers and technology were much more archaic, if none hmm. at all. However, the logic plague was for more advanced AI like Cortana, but with the kind of secret technologies the military and governments of the world probably have hidden away from the major populace, we may have advanced technologies that the flood could hijack for their own devices. If all else fails and major governments and militaries exhaust all resources, humanity will fall and become part of the flood. Surviving members will wait out their days hiding away until they either die out in isolation, become infected due to the air supply, or surrender themselves to the flood. The precursor's corruption to integrate all ungrateful life into one peaceful collective consciousness on our planet will complete. The grave minds of the world will ascend to their ultimate form, the key mind, where an entire planet will be conglomerated. The flood of Earth will reach their next stage, the interstellar stage, and make use of our space programs and brightest minds and proceed to reach for the stars as we have only done so few times before. The last remaining humans will peer from the ditches into the foggy brown skies and see the rockets we once constructed, what we saw as our greatest achievement, disappear into the clouds and witness the last giant leap of mankind disappear as the flood will have conquered us and moved on to find other hosts out there in the universe. Well, damn, Unlike that's typical depressing. zombies, and yes, some people probably would take offense to the flood being grouped up together to dim-witted decaying rotting corpses, but hey, it's the general public's opinion on the flood. The flood do not have an expiration date. Zombies left unchecked could decay and disappear and infected could starve out. The initial outbreak either would be noticed quickly or much like the origin story would have people using the dust-like form of the flood in everyday uses unknowingly until the flood outbreak mm -hmm. came from within us unknowingly till it was too late. The flood will always consume biomass however it can, draining the planet of all of its life and resources. Humans, animals, plants, as long as it has the ability to live, it is fair game for the flood. The only real way to rid the planet or cosmos of them is to starve them out by ridding any source of biomass available, i.e. animals, plants and humans of any kind. You may find yourself bunkered down in safety for a while, but you would need to venture out eventually, and when searching for food, you may find our once serene green and blue planet Earth turned into a festering hive yep. where naturally growing food will be gone or inconsumable due to the flood's conversions. And if you're planning to raid a food store, you will have to sneak past thousands of flood troops from the smallest spore to the biggest tank. You will also risk breathing in the air tainted by the grave mines hive spores. With the interconnected minds they all hmm. share. Even one flood noticing you will alert every flood troop in the well, on the planet. No amount of resources you have at your disposal will stop them. And when you are finally captured the process of conversion can either be quick and incredibly painful or an elongated form of mental and physical torture until you finally surrender whatever information the grave mind wishes to acquire. With the amount of progress we have made in space exploration, we wouldn't be anywhere close to discovering a halo that originally deployed pleaded the food source of the flood. Unless all countries agreed to eradicate themselves by nuclear hellfire and destroy all spacefaring technology to prohibit flood expansion, the human race and all the Earth's plant and wildlife will go extinct, leaving the planet a barren rock with dying floods scattered Sweet. across it. But at least the flood will never plague the universe. Earth at this point will basically become Mars and everything will be gone. Conspiracy theory. Mars originally had flood and it was like an Earth society and that's what happened. Woo! conspiracy theory. <laughs> yep, I got super, super bleak with that. To sum it all up, no, you will not survive. You do not want to suffer through this realm of existence. Don't even think you can. I don't care how many rounds of infection on Halo you blow have survived. Up. It ain't happening. Now, this has been a super long video that wasn't centered around Left 4 Dead, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up. If I missed out on anything, I'm sorry. This is my first step into digging into the lore of the Halo universe. Feel free to leave a comment, and if you like the video, like 
like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of future bleak realistic videos. Let me know what other apocalyptic settings just wouldn't be survivable and I'll see about covering it next. Donations on my Patreon are appreciated to motivate me and get you rewards like shirts, <laughs> this guy plays like me. server, which link in the description and credits on future videos. On that note, <laughs> thanks to my donators for motivating me to continue my pursuit into YouTube content creation. Until next time, I'm Zachass, aka Wow Such Gaming. Stay wow. All right, uh, that was it. Did a great job. Um, going into the lore of it all, and uh, you know, really going into the history of the, of the flood and how the the origin story. But what'd you think? Yeah, I'm gonna second that. He did a great job. Um, and I hope I get taken in the first wave. Yeah, I for don't want to be in this world. Well, I don't even know. Like, uh, uh, see. With the zombie apocalypse, yeah, like it's like okay, yeah, I want to get taken away down in the in the first wave because you know things could you might be able to sur sur survive it, but it would uh, probably not, and uh, you know the zombies could whatever like starve themselves out or like eventually decay. But like with the flood, I don't think it matters like when you get taken out. It just seems horrible at any point because the fact that like you are like aware of what's going on as you transform, it just sounds. Awful. Um, it's not like instant death and you're taken over. You just become like a walking corpse or whatever. And you, you, you know, you're no longer aware of it. Like you're aware and you're they, like they're probing your mind and erasing your memories. And because I mean, they, they would do it to everybody because they wouldn't just, they wouldn't just like, you know, assume that you didn't have any useful information. They would go through it and look, search for all the useful information uh, for the grave mind. Um, yeah, maybe the first way before the grave mind comes. So like maybe the grave mind wouldn't want to probe my memory. So the flood would just take over. And yeah, maybe the first wave would be the best. I have to say that I, so, so the idea of space travel has always been one of those things that I find kind of scary. Same thing with like mm. submarines, but submarines for some reason are a little bit less. So, um, just the idea that like you can't go outside or it's certain death is scary to me that that sort of like confinement. So I've never had the desire to go into space. Basically is what I'm saying. But I remember one of the things when I was at like a science and space museum as a kid that I found most scary was not the idea of like running into the little green men but it was the idea of like astronauts picking up some sort of germ virus infection unbeknownst mm. to them that they then bring back to earth and i just remember like as a kid you know there are certain things that you learn when when you're young that i don't know maybe you learn it a little bit too early or just when you do it kind of like blows your mind and awakens you to maybe how dark and scary the world can potentially be. And that was one of those moments for me. That and when I learned that the sun is eventually going to explode and wipe out <laughs> the first three planets. Um, that was another one of those moments. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, for me, this this idea is scarier than the zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. um, being, being infected with something, loss of control, having a hive yeah. mind takeover. I, I read a a Michael Crichton book and they were talking about um long story short like the people in it shrink down to like very very tiny sizes and this one guy gets uh stung by a wasp but the wasp was laying her eggs on in his arm at the time Ooh. that she stung him what was so nice about it, it, it if if you can say that is the fact that like as this happened the toxins that were released into his body and everything to start create creating the arm being like the nest for the wasp eggs um, and the larva that were then going to hatch inside him and eat him Ugh. was the fact that he was completely oblivious. Like his arm swells up to three times its normal size. He can't feel a thing. It doesn't hurt. He's just going on about his business. And I was like, well, like this is horrible and awful and gross. And like reading the description is terrible. But I was like, you know, at least he doesn't feel pain can't say that about the flood like you feel everything your bones snap yeah. your blood vessels burst like i mean your your awareness i think and being trapped inside your own body a passenger in it a passenger just getting tortured with pain um pretty much sounds like i don't know the seventh circle of hell basically what you were describing kind of reminds me of the scp body stealings parasite one where that like that gets infected and like all of a sudden he doesn't realize that his arm isn't like his his own and like is all deformed and everything like that and that well, the one person's like whole brain was just like the the parasite itself. That's kind of the kind of infection. Like if you know if you're gonna be taken over by uh, by a parasite, that's 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 the nice kind, not the flood. The, the flood are not so nice. And all of this is to say, I stand corrected. You shot that guy when we played, and that was that was a kindness. That was a kindness. That was a kindness. Thank you. Now this is th that's why we watched this video <laughs> so that I can be vindicated. 
Just so my husband could tell me he was right. Um, also, what I found interesting is the fact that, like, unlike a zombie apocalypse where they would eat on, like, flesh and, and whatnot and, uh, you know, animals and, and people, the flood infect plants. Everything. So everything. So, I mean, yeah, with you know, once they inf infect that, then, you know, no more air, no more oxygen. So you're screwed and you're dead. And no more food supply either, because yeah. even if you're a meat eater, the meat eaters eat the herbivores that eat the plants. So without the plants, there's no herbivores, there's no meat eaters, and there goes the food chain. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just, you, you'd you be screwed no matter what. You No no one would survive. He, he's, he 99 .9, 99 he said 99.9, 99.9%. He said, no, 100%. You all, nobody would survive that. Um, I mean, like, maybe if you had a spaceship and humans have traveled far enough in, into space to, like, know of another habitable place mm -hmm. like like you know maybe yeah you could escape in your little spacecraft and go off and and there's like the point zero 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 one percent chance of survival but well then yeah you survive but then you end up dying not, not from the flood but you end up dying of whatever starvation because you can't find a habitable planet and you're just like you know wandering off in space well that's why i put the little happy happy idea out there that we traveled and like had found said place maybe. yeah and maybe you brought the infection with you and now you've infected another planet. Good job. Wait, way to go. Way to go. And that's how he rains on my parade. I basically shoot her ideals in the head. Bam! <laughs> like the soldier he murdered when we played Halo. All comes back full circle, people. All right, so thanks. Let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And also check out the description of this video because we have playlists there for uh, Halo, for a bunch of our Halo reactions and Halo gameplay and whatnot. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for Wow Such Gaming's Why You Wouldn't Survive a Halo Flood, but uh, why you wouldn't survive the Halo Flood, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.